how are my kitchen peeps doing? Maggie's here. We are getting ready to cook a pork roast. <sighs> yeah, baby. I know it seems like I have some kind of thing about pork, and I guess I really do, but I'm equally enthralled with all meats, but <laughs> I love pork. This is just the package, obviously, because the roast I already pulled out. This is a Mahaffey pork butt, pork shoulder, pork butt, whatever you want to term it. Let me get the package out of the way. I just cut it out and set it over here so the, you know, the blood that was in the package could drain out. But we're gonna make an herbed pork roast. And actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna prep it today and I'm gonna stick it in my fridge and then I'm gonna cook it tomorrow because I already have supper for tonight prepped and about to start. So, and the roast takes several hours. So anyway, I'll do it tomorrow. So this will be kind of a over two day or video like y'all care, but anyway, I'm just babbling. So let's talk about what we're gonna do. Um, this recipe is another, wait for it, simple, <laughs> super simple, easy thing to do. I do not like shirts that are I like a V-neck, but anyway, so if you always see me pulling on my shirts, I just don't like something on my neck. I'm a babbling goofball today, but so it's gonna be some oil, several herbs. We're gonna mix all that together, rub the roast down real good, put it, I'm gonna actually cook it in my big cast iron Dutch oven. I love that thing, it was a Christmas present and I love it. But anyway, so the recipe um, that I follow, I cook this at my restaurant quite a bit. Well, I say quite a bit, I don't cook any meats quite a bit. I have a pretty lengthy, like three month rotation. I've only had one cup of coffee and no alcohol, I promise y'all. I don't know why I'm so badly this afternoon. But anyway, it's a beautiful day and I love the beautiful sunshine and I guess it's just got me all torqued up. But what we've got in our bowl, yeah, doesn't that look yummy, is bacon grease, ta-da, out of our little handy dandy bacon grease keeper. So um, it's three tablespoons, I already measured that out. I've got a five pound roast. So I'm just kind of adjusting my seasonings accordingly. I'll turn this down so y'all can see. It's not gonna be super exciting watching me measure a couple of um, herbs, but it'll get to a good part in just a minute. I'm just trying to make sure I got all my stuff handy because once my, once my hands get super gooey, I won't be able to touch a lot of stuff and hopefully the camera won't fall. Okay, here we are. Now, can you see that? And look, I got on my pig shirt. <laughs> That was not planned, but I noticed it after I started, so I thought, well, that's appropriate. Mr. P's T's, Cushon de Lake, Louisiana, pig shirt. Okay, back to what I'm doing and downplaying on the babbling. So, we are gonna do, um, like I said, three tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna do, I gotta break this up, a tablespoon See how easy that is to just break my salt up. I don't have to worry about any crummy, nasty filler stuff. So it's three, I'm sorry, one tablespoon and one teaspoon. This will all be in the comments. You don't have to remember any of it. I'm just babbling. Then we're gonna have time. Don't we all need some time? We're gonna do tea la la two teaspoons. Maybe if I had more caffeine, I'd be less babbling. Um, two teaspoons of basil, dried basil, all organic, of course. One, two, and then two teaspoons of dried rosemary. One. I'm not just overly super, super particular about my measurements, close is close enough. And then I want two tablespoons of minced garlic. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm not being super particular and actually I like a little extra garlic, so I kind of went a little more. And we're gonna mash this up. You recognize this, don't you? This is our roasted garlic that we did on one of our very early videos. And it's been in my freezer and I got some out. I keep my little handy jar, recycled jar, in the refrigerator. And when I need it, I pull it out. I do this. It's super easy, super quick. Fresh garlic is amazing. I think roasted garlic is just as good. And I'll kind of go in like that. And there you go. So we'll dump that in the bowl. 
Make sure we get every bit of it. All right, so that is the end of the mix, and we'll get it all stirred around here shortly. But what we're gonna do now is cut our roast. And this is a thing I don't, it's just another one of those things I've always done. Um, I'm gonna put some gloves on just to kind of hopefully keep from having to touch anything with super gooey, pork roasty, herby, bacon fatty hands. Look at that beauty. Goodness gracious alive. So anyway, I always, always cut my roasts in half. Reason be, and really regardless of size, and I know that sounds weird, maybe it is weird, it's just what I do. But one reason, especially with this kind of thing, is we're gonna rub this herb mixture all over the roast. So we wanna get a little more of the surface area covered. You could cut it in quarters. And you know what, this one, if you can see, you see that bone? Ooh, there's the bone, 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 bone. You want bone in your roast. There's a bone there. So this one would be kind of hard. I mean, you could cut it, but it'd be a little more challenging. This side is just a big hunk of meat. So I think I will cut it just for giggles. And this just puts more of the herb mixture on the surface. And I tell you what, I'm gonna babble. I might as well change my mind. I'm gonna go ahead and cut along this bone surface. Cut this. And this may freak some people out. Oh, you're cutting the roast all up. But I wanna get as much of that herb over all of the surface as possible. So there's our four hunks of meat. This is our oil and herbs. And we're just gonna mix it up really, really well to almost make a, not almost, make a paste. Ooh, and it smells unbelievably good. I mean, bacon grease, garlic, and seasonings? Yes, please. Now, we're gonna take it, I'm trying to make sure I'm still in the video, pull this a little closer, and just rub it all over the outside. And you don't have to be, you know me, I'm not like just too ridiculously concerned about perfection, but you do wanna try and cover all of the exposed flesh. So we'll set that piece in there and then we'll get them all arranged all nice and neat after we get, get them all rubbed up. Cause if we have a little bit of herb left, we'll go back and rub some more on one of the earlier ones. Make sure everything is good and covered. And I guess I will just keep babbling while I do this because my hands are nasty and I can't pause the phone or the video. So sorry, y'all get to watch the exciting stuff. Oh, all the behind the scenes. <laughs> Whatever. Behind the scenes is behind me in the dish, in the sink over there washing all my dishes. Which, that's just part of it. And it's not a big deal. But this roast is really juicy. It's really got a very nice flavor. The pork really comes through, but the herbs just make it really nice. And one thing, you, you can do a pork loin for this. Pork loins are um, less fatty. I like some fatty meats. So I prefer the butt or the shoulder. Um, but if you use a loin, it can be an amazing piece of meat if it's cooked right. And to me, the only way to use a loin is if you're gonna brine it. All right, I'm gonna go back on this first piece and add a little more. Um, so if you watched our pork chop brining video, we talked about brining meat and a pork loin is a perfect example of a piece of meat that you should brine because you want to, um, and get all this off of here because there's no point in having herbs on my gloves in the trash. They need to be on the roast in the oven cooking good. But anyway, um, any kind of meat that has a tendency to be on the dry side, or even if you just want to take a good piece of meat and take it up about 500 notches, brining is the way to go, and a loin just screams for a brine. Because when you do it, and then you 
cook it however, roast it, grill it, smoke it, you know, whatever. Wow, can it be something amazing. All right, so I'll quit doing all that. Then, let me get my chicken stock. So we've got our homemade chicken stock. And we're gonna pour um, a cup and a half. Oh, I should, this is a, was a two cup deli that I had in my freezer. It's still got a little bit of ice in it, but that's okay, because it's going in the fridge overnight. Not gonna hurt a thing. And let me move this so y'all can see this. Good golly. All right, see that? Ooh, isn't that pretty? So that is gonna go in the oven. I'm gonna cover it real tight. I will cover this with tin foil because nothing is sticking up to touch the meat. And then I'll set my lid on it just to keep it tight, nice, and steamed. And it will go in the oven um, on 325 for about three and a half, four hours. I'll put it in for three and a half and then check it see how tender or whatever it is and it's gonna be really good the flavor is amazing it's gonna have a really nice kind of um, flavorful au jus that if you want you could pour off and make a gravy out of and then have gravy for potatoes or rice or pasta or whatever or you can just serve it with the kind of au jus which is typically what I do but anyway so that's that see how easy that is amazing you could do this in a crock pot so you could put it all together, throw it in your crock pot, turn it on in the morning, go to work, come home. I do it on low for like eight hours. And you walk into your house and it smells amazing and supper's ready. Just get your sides together. That's an awesome way to do it. Um, it's just really good. But I encourage you, get locally grown meat. We need to encourage our farmers to do what they love doing by buying from them. And if you noticed with all the drama in the world and the blizzards we had back a few weeks ago, whatever, a month ago, whatever that was, um, we need to support our local food system. It's important because if we get to a point that transportation's not what it needs to be, who knows how, when, why, whatever, we need local food, local food. So support your local farmers. All right, infomercial's over. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, I probably I won't come on until it's done because I don't think I need to show y'all how to put it in the oven But I'll cook it tomorrow and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished and it's phenomenal. So we'll be back Okay, well, it's actually a couple days later of doing the pork roast because I cooked some other stuff last night because I've just been a cooking machine lately and <laughs> doing all kinds of fun stuff but I have just gotten this out of the oven, taken the foil and the lid off, and wow, sir, let me turn this down so you can see. Look at that, look how tender that is. Oh my gosh, look at that bone. Dad gum, supper gonna be good tonight. Wow. Oh, sorry. I'm so busy drooling. I'm not getting the camera pointed in the right direction. But there you go, peeps. <laughs> I need to just quit playing with the roast and drooling on my phone and finish the video. Herbed pork roast. I had this on 325 for, let's see, four hours. And it is beautiful. And I'm about to pig out. Look at that. Yes, ma'am, sir, y'all got to try it. Get you one. <laughs> Have a good one. Like, subscribe, comment, clap, share, do all the thingies, please. Have a good one.